came first, the chicken or the egg? Science has long been asking and answering all kinds of difficult questions. Everything from what is the universe made of, to when did life begin, and is time travel really possible? However, first things first, may we please get an answer to the classic conundrum, which came first, the chicken or the egg? At first, it may sound like a simple question, but when you think about it, is it really that simple? Eggs come from chickens, but chickens come from eggs, and this cycle continues forever since one perpetually comes before the other. Well, today, we are going to see if science can help us with the answer. As we all know, all chickens hatch from eggs, and all eggs are laid by chickens. Everything depends on a pre-existing entity for their current existence. So, how do we find out which came first? Evolution is the key. Evolution holds the answer to this question. Let's have a look. In the animal kingdom, animals that lay eggs are called oviparous animals. Scientifically speaking, an egg is nothing but a membrane-bound shell where an embryo can develop and mature till it can live by itself. Eggs were laid by other animals way before chickens came into the picture. It is estimated that amniotes, which are four-limbed animals with a backbone that lay eggs, can be traced back to around 370 to 340 million years ago. This supports the idea that eggs came first. Now, let's take a look at the chicken. Modern birds have actually evolved from small carnivorous dinosaurs. The first intermediate species between birds and theropods, which are dinosaurs characterized by hollow bones and three-toed limbs, such as the Archaeopteryx, lived during the late Jurassic period, 201 to 145 million years ago. The true ancestor of birds probably arrived during the late Cretaceous period, 145 to 66 million years ago. This lineage tells us that birds evolved much later than dinosaurs, and dinosaurs laid eggs. The very first chicken in existence would have been the result of a genetic mutation, or mutations, taking place in a zygote produced by two chicken-like birds, or proto-chickens. At some point in history, two chicken-like birds, let's call them a proto-rooster and proto-hen, mated, and the proto-hen laid a clutch of eggs. One of these eggs housed an offspring with DNA mutations, resulting in what we would consider the first chicken. This finally confirms that eggs definitely came before chickens. However, there are few scientists that believe that the chicken came first. This claim is based on the process required for the formation of chicken eggs. Well, in order to lay eggs, chickens have a very specific protein called ovocladin-17, or OC17, which helps in the process of formation of the eggshells. This protein is only found in the ovary of a chicken, leading to the suggestion that the chicken must have come before the chicken egg, since without OC17, there can be no chicken egg formation. Well, we're back to our dilemma and still trying to figure it out. How can creatures eat their own kind? Ever thought what it would be like if human beings ate other human beings for survival? That would be disgusting. However, in the animal kingdom, cannibalism is quite common. Many animal species eat their own kind for survival or to protect their homes from predators. But you wouldn't suspect that these five animals actually turn to their own kind as a food source. Hamster. As cute as they may seem, most species of hamsters are cannibals. Both the male and female hamsters eat their young ones if they are weak or sick. A female may kill her babies if they are too many, and if she cannot defend them when her territory is at risk. Praying Mantis Definitely not as angelic as the name suggests. The female species of the praying mantis sometimes bites off the head of her lover immediately after mating in order to sustain herself and nurture her soon-to-be offspring. It is also easier since the male is generally smaller in size. Rabbit. Very adorable indeed, and also very clean. So clean that the mother eats her younger ones just to keep things tidy after giving birth. The mother rabbit sometimes also eats her stillborn if she senses a predator in order to protect herself and her other bunnies. It is also known that rabbits eat their babies if they are very hungry, thirsty or cold. 
polar bear. Not until recently has it been recorded that polar bears are forced to eat their young ones due to global warming. It has become difficult for them to hunt seals due to the elimination of ice blocks. Therefore, in order to survive, they're compelled to eat their babies. Chicken. Chickens peck one another in order to establish power and hierarchy. Therefore, the term pecking order. Chickens also blindly imitate one another, so if one chicken starts pecking another, the rest will follow, thus turning them into cannibals. It has also been identified that chickens who have calcium deficiency sometimes eat their own eggs. So if you feel sorry about eating eggs, don't worry, the chickens eat them too. Mosquitoes. Creepy creatures that make your life all about scratching. Did you know that they are even older than dinosaurs? And they can survive any harsh conditions except the Antarctic? Yeah, these little flying creatures are extremely adaptable. We bet you've met many and probably have one around waiting to prick you while you're watching this. Now, what we're curious about is why do they bite? Why do they need blood? Well, this is going to surprise you. Out of the 3,000 plus mosquito species that exist, only the female mosquitoes bite humans or other mammals for their blood. And male mosquitoes survive only on the nectar of fruits and plants. That brings us to the next question. How do they even find us? Well, for the longest time, we thought they tracked us with the help of light, but apparently not. It's the body heat. Yeah, you heard that right. They're attracted to the heat of our bodies and the carbon dioxide that we release when we breathe. They can detect this carbon dioxide from the range of about 20 meters. Wow, quite a spy, right? Facts reveal that mosquitoes take about three to four minutes to fill their belly. But isn't that too long? Actually, once their belly is full, their body processes the blood and throws out the water from it, retaining only the red blood cells. And the female mosquitoes can drink up to three times more blood than their own body weight. Oh, that's quite a capacity. But hell, why would they do that? To build on their protein and iron quotient for the process of laying the eggs, which is present in the human blood. The process of them taking the blood in is actually very interesting. Did you know that they sting you with not one, not two, but six needles at a time? When the mosquitoes find their prey, they sit and start looking for a blood vessel by pushing their proboscis inside. If they don't get lucky the first time, they keep looking for the blood vessel till they find one. This proboscis is made up of six needles. Two of them have saw-like edges that make them cut through the human skin. Two needles help them to keep the tissue apart from each other. One of the needles, also known as labrum, helps them to find the blood vessel. This needle has more than 150 receptors to find the exact blood vessel, and then they use this same needle to suck the blood. Wow! Can you guess what the sixth needle, or hypopharynx, is used for? This needle is used to spit saliva while piercing through our skin, causing it to itch and sting. Mosquito saliva consists of more than 100 plus enzymes that works as a local anaesthetic and also stops the blood from clotting. Now, almost all humans are allergic to this mosquito saliva. Yes, I said almost all humans. There are a few humans who are not allergic to this. Lucky for them. The human body releases histamines, a chemical compound that causes the skin to itch and causes inflammation, and white blood cells, also known as lymphocytes, to fight against the saliva, which causes the bump on the skin and makes it extremely itchy. As the mosquitoes spit the saliva, they sometimes transfer deadly diseases like malaria, Zika, dengue, chikungunya, etc., which kills around more than one million people. Now that's really bad. Here's a quick tip on how you can keep these deadly bites away. Light candles which have fragrances, grow some plants or herbs, and always keep sprays and repellents handy. Try it and you'll be surprised. It actually works. <laughs>